everyone and thank you for coming this evening and joining Lennon and Lisa H and me. Um, it gets very confusing with the two Lisas. And um, Lennon is going to be talking about food tonight, um, if there's a best food for your dog. Um, so I will pass you over to him and I'll turn off my microphone and hand you over to Lennon who runs yeah. Amity Vets in Devon. So I think to have a, a content, uh, to have this uh, talking about food. So we're talking about the aims and principles of feeding before we go into uh, what choice of food should you give. A bit of history. Talk about dry food, wet food, raw feeding, and other diets. And a bit of uh, amity news. So aims and principles of feeding. Um, so bear in mind that this is purely my opinion um, as a, well, you can say as a vet, but just personally really. So please do not uh, take what I say as gospel uh, and it's all makes a bit of a research, but nonetheless, it's just my opinion. Aims and principles of feeding. Keeping the dog alive. I think that is the basic principle of why anybody feed, um, even ourselves these days, isn't it? Keeping the dog alive, that's basic, basic principles. And after that, you want to do a bit more than that. You want to be achieving a thriving life. And also certain principles comes into how convenient it is for you. How confident are you in knowing what you're feeling and giving what you're giving? So a little bit of history. Back in 1860, UK actually developed the first commercial dog biscuit. And in, 19, uh, in 1890, U.S. was introduced to the above formula. So just a little bit back, uh, back in 1860, what happened was that they were on a ship and they had some dogs uh, on the ship itself. And they found that, you know, the dogs were just killing the rats, but they also started introducing their own food, their own biscuit. And uh, this guy was thinking, okay, can we actually formulate a dog biscuit such that it is just for dogs because they seem to enjoy it that much, but it's not just sharing from humans. And that's when it first started in 1860. Then 30 years later, U.S. was introduced to the above concept. So randomly and funnily or interestingly, U.K. actually first started the whole commercial dog biscuit, not the U.S. And canned dog food was introduced in 1922, mainly horse meat because they had no idea what to do with the horses that was being uh, put down at a point of time. So that was certainly one way of using um, the meat from horses. It was only until the 60s where, you know, they were talking about that there was a unique nutritional care for puppies formulated because they realized that puppies were not exactly small dogs. They needed some more, um, you know, special uh, requirements for that. And that was only in the 60s, you know, considering it's 100 years later when the first commercial uh, dog biscuit was done. Then they started doing something for puppies. In the mid-80s, a U.S. Uh, National Research Council uh, publish nutritional requirements. This is when they actually publish what the dogs need, what is in the food that is being produced. Before that, it was just, you know, lump it all together, let's serve it. And uh, it was only in the mid-80s when they actually said, okay, this is what they need, and uh, let's find out whether the food actually reflected that. 93, bath started in Australia. 